this is part two of a series all about playing classical guitar without nails. Studying any amount of classical guitar is crazy beneficial for our guitar playing, no matter what style or type of guitar playing we ultimately want to pursue. So whether you already play classical guitar or not, I think this series could be really helpful for you. There's a link in the description to a playlist of all the videos in this series. In part one, we talked about the history of classical guitar right hand technique and how playing without nails actually used to be quite common, even though now today it's considered practically sacrilegious to even attempt it. Um, all the videos in the series can stand alone, but definitely watch them all. They all go together if you're interested in this topic. In this video, we're going to talk about the trade-offs of playing nails versus no nails and specifically why I chose to transition into playing with the fingertips and without nails after using nail technique for almost 20 years. And also we're going to try to investigate why is it that today so many people just absolutely hate the idea of playing without nails on the classical guitar and we'll dig a little more into the history to try to figure that out. We have a lot to cover. Let's get into it. I'm Jared Borkowski from SoundGuitarLessons.com. On this channel, I teach on a wide variety of guitar topics to help you increase your overall musicianship skills, gain more creative control over music, and express yourself more freely. If you're new here, welcome. Please subscribe and hit the bell. So I want to explain why I'm making this transition from playing with nail technique for so long and then switching to my fingertips on the classical guitar. And in order to do that, I do have to talk a little bit about myself, which is kind of uncomfortable. Honestly, I'd rather just teach you cool stuff that's about you and, and helping you and, and helping you with your goals. But hopefully this is um, good for, for just the context of, of me ultimately helping you. Um, so I originally fell in love with music just via making stuff up, just raw creativity, just making sounds, songwriting. Um, I just wanted to write my own stuff. And that, that was really my first love of music and what I did for a long time. It eventually occurred to me that um, learning formally or learning um, academically and learning other people's music was going to help with that creative um, pursuit and that creative goal, help refine things, help speed up the process, all of that. So I went to college and majored in classical guitar performance. And while I was there, I ended up getting into the jazz program and ended up getting a degree in jazz studies. So since that time, I have pretty much equally identified with all three of these um, musical directions. And I've continued to kind of cycle between them and continue to develop them and maintain them and work on them through whatever kind of creative projects or bands or, or gigs or uh, certainly a lot of teaching and helping other people um, progress with these different uh, topics and areas as well. So you might relate to this challenge and maybe not. Maybe you just have one thing that you're, you purely are trying to do and I respect that and, and even envy it. But but I know a lot of people have this, um, you know, these passions for multiple different styles or techniques or, or sound, or we kind of just want to learn it all and it, it all feels amazing. Um, so we're kind of cycling between um, different things that we are studying. For me, this has made it quite challenging to stick to any one um, kind of musical identity or, or project for very long in terms of putting myself out there, in terms of having like a Spotify um account or something like that, uh, which is why I don't really have that stuff. I have a lot of music I've made, but I've never really created like an identity that I can, I can kind of release stuff other than individual projects and individual bands. And maybe I'll share some of that music in the future or something, but, um, th that has made it really hard. And, and I think why teaching is so gratifying is that I can just kind of focus on helping someone else get to their goals. And this variety of experience can can help a variety of people and help you know someone who might have these overlapping interests. It's also made it really challenging to have a focus on my YouTube channel where I'm teaching because um, I, I'll talk about songwriting or, or 
kind of learning pop songs and then I'll talk about jazz guitar and improvisation and and uh, I very rarely talked about classical guitar and if you know my channel maybe you recognize that um, unless I'm talking about how oh this classical technique is helpful for something else and like I did with uh, my hybrid picking lesson that I did um, kind of recently I talked about classical guitar helping with that I think this is why I've talked so much about music theory on my channel because that just applies to no matter what goal no matter what genre style that's gonna help us be a better musician and reach those goals uh, musically on the guitar seeing the fretboard with clarity um, having labels uh, to sounds and structures in music and understanding some of these concepts just super helpful definitely with classical guitar too even though that's not commonly taught in classical guitar these days and that right there is a great example of having this variety of interests helping each of those interests right so if my three of classical guitar jazz guitar and songwriting are of interest well they all influence each other in this beautiful way and someone might say well you know jack of all trades master of none i don't care about that at all i just care about the the feeling i can get from you know does it feel right what i'm trying to get out of expressing at any given time any one of these things um so if i could be a better classical guitarist by 100 percent focusing on that that's not gonna stress me out that much honestly i've tried each of those categories exclusively and i just get um, depressed about not having the uh, one of the other ones right so my knowledge of theory comes a lot from studying jazz guitar but then oh my gosh it's amazing to understand the theory really clearly with uh, classical guitar and I'll talk more about how to break down classical theory in the future but same with songwriting like wow you can write some really unique songs if you know all of this stuff exposed from these other two um, genres so that's kind of my thing and um, I thought it's too broad before but now I'm realizing maybe that is the focus. Anyway, I'm going to talk more about all of that in my next video next week, which is going to be a special kind of uh, celebration video. So I hope to see you there. Now, like I said, I know that some people are definitely interested in just one thing, one sound, one tradition. That's awesome for them. Uh, but I noticed over the years from just colleagues and certainly from a lot of teaching, a lot of people are, are like me where they're interested in all these different varieties of sounds kind of just whatever makes you feel the feels right all these different styles and genres and, and techniques and, and kind of chasing these different directions uh, because it feels good and I just want to share my perspective on this if you zoom out just a little bit I don't see genres and styles as really that different they're they're way more the same than they are different it all just feels like music so these multiple things I'm pursuing it just feels like music and I really see this as the pursuit here is is looking for creative and technical control over music so that we can have the capacity to express ourselves as fluently as possible and then hopefully find something deep and meaningful in that expression that's it that's the singular goal that's the one thing whatever sound style technique it's like that's the actual one thing it really is unified and centered anything that helps me go towards that i'm interested and I find that classical guitar is definitely one of those things that helps very much with that goal. So I say all of that just to put it in context for why might I find it appealing to switch from playing with nail technique to playing with my fingertips? And why am I, how, how is it that I find it acceptable given the uh, paradigm, the, the common belief that it's, it's really not okay to do that? Um, when you think about the actual goal, so for me is not upholding some specific tradition and it's not about competing with someone else or even sounding a certain way it's about accessing what i want out of classical music and the technique is it possible to do even if it's different cool if so then i'm happy and so for me i find that it is and that's why i'm doing this this series to, to talk about it and to talk about the differences i love the sound of playing with nails totally love the sound of it um, I also really love this new thankfully I love this new sound of playing without my nails so for me it makes sense to make this transition which is quite difficult I mean if it if I was purely interested in classical guitar after investing so much time in playing with nail technique why would I switch there'd have to be some kind of reason it's because of this variety of these other things where um, having nails is quite a burden and, and a sacrifice and so it it's allowing me to embrace this 
with more clarity and continue with my other goals as well. I think any classical guitarist would agree with me that maintaining and keeping your nails, even just shaping and polishing them and getting the tone you want is just a constant battle and, and very challenging and can even be quite a burden at times. And of course, a number of activities outside of classical guitar can become really annoying and difficult if you're constantly watching out for, for your nails. Um, you know, other styles, for example, if you want to play um, hybrid or finger style on a steel string guitar or an electric guitar, that's not a good idea. It's going to shred up your nails. If you want to do, you know, maybe a tapping technique or something like that, you're not going to be able to um, access that as properly as you could. Uh, if you want to play piano, you can't really use proper technique on the piano if you have nails. And not to mention non-musical activities like rock climbing, forget about it, playing basketball, super dangerous, you better watch out. But of course, dedicated classical guitarists are more than willing to make these sacrifices. I mean, think about it. If someone is their main musical purpose is classical guitar. Yeah. You, you would do whatever it takes to sound as good as you can. And so you're going to say, well, classical guitar is more important to me than these other things. So yeah, I, I'm going to make those sacrifices. I'm dedicated. I'm serious. I'm going to have these nails and keep them sounding as good as I can. And, and that's what I'm doing now. Unfortunately, the default expectation that you have to make those sacrifices to play any amount of classical guitar is now creating and perpetuating this barrier to entry that contributes to the elitism and the exclusionary nature of classical guitar culture, which if you didn't know that that's going on, that is definitely going on. There are some serious bullies out there who are putting down anyone else who isn't playing music within the confines of what they see as the right or better way to do it. Now, I think the majority of serious classical guitarists are perfectly reasonable and humble and kind hearted and open minded. Um, but you just don't hear from those types of people as often. Really, you could say this with any group of people, right? You're hoping that the majority of people in general are kind and willing to help somebody out. Um, but those people, these classical guitarists, for example, they're spending their own time finding their jo enjoyment from studying music and, and learning and practicing. Uh, and then like any group or any art form, there's going to be that small min minority of purists who have this air of superiority and they just happen to be way louder than everybody else with their negativity, especially online. My opinion is that these bullies out there who think that playing with your nails is the only way to go and you're a fool and an amateur if you think otherwise. And yes, that is actually what people think. Do a quick Google search. You'll find tons of comments from, from those people who hold that belief. I think anybody trying to tell someone else what the right thing to do is in this context is it's just coming from insecurity and, and they're unhappy with their own musical development. Why else, why else would you be that way? If they spend that hour working on their tremolo or something, or, or being creative, instead of yelling at somebody on Reddit, maybe they would feel a little more satisfaction and recognize that music isn't about idolizing virtuosity or institutionalizing some specific standard of playing, but it's about introspective exploration and it's about communicating and finding meaning by sharing the depth of the human condition with each other where words fall short. And yeah, turns out you can pursue that however you want and you don't need nails to do it or this technique or that, or, you know, whatever, apply this against the argument that the purists are making in any art form. We'd have no progress. If we didn't break the rules, we'd still be in the middle ages, right? We wouldn't have progress in any of the art in the world. Okay. You see where I stand on this topic and, and just how I feel about guitar playing in general. Now, if you're familiar with this argument, with this topic, nails versus no nails at all, you might be thinking, but what about Andre Segovia? Well, Francisco Targa is sometimes called the grandfather of modern classical guitar. Andre Segovia is referred to as the father of modern classical guitar. Segovia is basically single-handedly responsible for popularizing the guitar as a serious classical instrument. Prior to Segovia, the guitar was more of a parlor instrument, and it was often not taken very seriously and not respected by other classical musicians. The instrument and the repertoire weren't seen as being worthy of being performed in the context of, of a true classical recital. Uh, the guitar wasn't thought of as being sophisticated enough until Segovia put up the fight and insisted 
that it was. And he succeeded, and he became a huge influential figure. So what does Segovia have to say about nails versus no nails? Well, when asked about Targa's use of the right hand without nails, here's what Segovia said. He said, it is absolutely stupid. You reduce the volume of the guitar and the difference of timbre and color. Tarraga has renounced the real nature of the guitar, which is the richness of its timbres, the different colors of the guitar. This is basically the opinion of the majority of classical guitarists today. Maybe without as much negativity, but certainly people feeling like, yeah, playing with nails is the way to go. Um, I mentioned a grumpy guitar icon that I was going to reveal uh, in this video. I mentioned it in part one. Yes, Andre Segovia is that uh, grumpy guitar icon. He was such a big influence that in addition to the transition from gut strings to nylon strings, he's a big reason why classical guitarists today pretty much feel like you should play with your nails, and if you don't, then you're not a real classical guitarist. To be fair, I can see why Andre Segovia adopted his stubborn attitude when it came to probably anything that he believed in and stood for, because he was up against the entire rest of the classical music community trying to make the guitar a respected instrument. And here's the thing, he was completely correct in how playing with the flesh of the fingertips changes the sound of the guitar. He was right. And if he was going to be wanting to play for big crowds in concert halls, which he was, I mean, just the volume difference alone would be enough to convince somebody that you really have to play with your fingertips if you're going to project sound and play for a big audience. By all accounts, Andre Segovia was what you might call a classical guitar snob. But his attitude on these things totally makes sense given his situation, his uphill battle of probably constantly needing to defend himself and his instrument and his approach to music. So that makes sense for him. But here's the question. Does that make sense for us? Is everyone who plays classical guitar or interested in classical guitar, are we all wanting to play big concert hall recitals, um, serious classical guitar environment uh, without amplification, competing with other classical instruments and, and musicians? No. We're going to pause and say to be continued from there, but stay tuned for the rest of this series because in the next video, we're going to reach a final conclusion, one that I think is a really, really important takeaway for this overall conversation. And I'm going to recommend a way that I think all of us as a community of guitarists should be thinking about this topic. If you're interested in music theory, definitely grab my free music theory chord chart called Chords with Color. It's just an awesome chord chart. I know that's not typical of classical guitar, but that's what I'm talking about in this video, like approaching classical guitar uh, in a way that is maybe not so traditional can get amazing results. These chords on this chord chart sound so good with nylon string guitar and with uh, finger style technique and, and all of that. So it's just a really cool, unique chord chart that I made that shows the theory of chords through keys and also the chord tone theory. And just even if you just play a few shapes that are unique and, and beautiful sounding, a bunch of extended chords, free chord chart. There's a link in the description, at the top of the description there. I hope you get it and play with it and have some enjoyable uh, music experiences just in your own practice time and finding fulfillment. I post a new lesson video every week. See you next week. Take care, happy practicing, and thank you so much.